Hello everybody, it's Ian again from Simbuild UK. Uh, we're on to our next project, uh, which is the uh, Ethos from Cockpit Sim Parts. Uh, I believe they sell this uh, as a dummy. I need to double check that. Um, but I'm going to show you how to make it a fully working Ethos as the original is. Um, these are the, the parts supplied um, by cockpit sim parts. Um, we'll start over here. Uh, they supply these little tactile switches. Uh, and what these do is go in these pre drilled holes, seven of them across there. Um, then your, your face plate would go on top like that. And if you've watched my uh, FMC build, uh, you'll know about these double plates uh, with the button glued on top. Um, and what happens is that the back plate sits on top of the button. Uh, get my tweezers here. That drops in there like that and then your button would glue on top like that. Now I'm not going to be using the supplied switches uh, because they're supposed to be backlit so what I'm going to be doing is fitting these little 6mm illuminator tactiles uh, again from the FMC video uh, these are the switches I used for the left and right select keys at the very top of the FMC so they fit in the pre-drilled holes they're the same pin layout so they'll go in there like that um, and you'll know that I didn't get the LEDs with them uh, so what I'm going to be doing is these are leftover 12mm tactile switches from my FMC um, I need to double check but I believe the LED is white and it's just a green lens so I'm going to take these apart and strip the white LED out and drop them straight in these little 6mm buttons so that will give me a white LED Uh, so all I've done so far is the two plates here I've just bolted them together temporarily just for me to sort of plan what I'm doing uh, this front plate has got uh, a clear cover on the inside which at the moment is painted grey which will need peeling off uh, for the light to shine through for the backlighting Uh, this is the plate where everything fits to, so two three position switches and two 12 position rotary switches uh, which you can obviously lock to the four positions for here and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positions for uh, the range. Um, and what's as it comes supplied from cockpit sim parts, they get mounted on there. That plate pops on there like that. Obviously, you'd have all your switches in and plus two for the FPV and the meters. And again, for the FPV and the meters, it's the same setup with the round back plate and the button glued on top uh, and that's a, a quick and easy ready to go ethos um, if that's how you want to do it I mean I want to do it properly so mine's going to involve a little bit more work uh, I've been sat here thinking about it for a little while and what I plan to do is 
with these two uh, the real leafus has a, a push button on the ends of these shafts uh, this one is a CTR button and this one here would be a traffic button uh, so what I plan to do is not quite sure how I'm going to do it yet but I'll cover that in detail when I get to it but I'm going to be drilling a hole down the centre uh, of this rotary switch uh, which will mount to a push button on the back here so that the outer shaft will turn uh, the rotary and the push will then push a rod which will come out the back here and mount to a push button a push switch um, but like I said I'll cover that in more detail once I've thought about it a bit more uh, and I'll probably film the whole process of me doing it uh, so that's the easier ones of the two that I'm going to modify the more difficult ones are going to be up here uh, because you've got three different things going on you've got uh, an outer knob which changes between radio and barrow and on this side inches and HPA uh, you've also got a dial on the front which adjusts the the mins and the barrow and you've also got a push button which goes through the center of the whole lot and to do that I'm going to be mounting a, a rotary switch which will do the outer one which is the uh, radio and barrow so that will be a two position switch again I'm gonna have to drill down the center uh, to which a rod will go and fix to a rotary encoder with a push button so that gives me the other two functions and the way I'm gonna do that is to mount some kind of uh, this is a bit small but there'll be a uh, some sort of board mounted further back which the rotary encoder will fix to uh, and as well as the two push buttons and another rotary encoder here which will do this side so two rotary encoders two push buttons four rotary switches to drill down the center of Uh, and then we'll be somewhere kind of close uh, obviously we've got LED strip light in to mount uh, to light up uh, all the writing on the front here as well as the seven LEDs to light up uh, the writing on the buttons so I think I said in my last video that uh, the MCP video that this was going to be quite easy compared to what I've already done but <laughs> it would have been easy had I have stuck to the um, stuck to doing it as they intended it but I want it to be right so um, I do get in the habit of changing things uh, to make it a lot harder for myself but there we go I'd rather do it once do it right and um, do one I'm not happy with and have to redo the whole thing again at a later date so from cockpit sim parts you get all these knobs um, obviously these dual ones are dummies they don't they don't move they're fixed um, so that I'm not going to be using them uh, and my printer is currently in the background printing some uh, 
designs that I've slightly modified from Carl Clark. Um, the reason I've modified them is because I want to, um, if we take this knob for example, um, what I've done is pushed uh, in Fusion, I've pushed this top surface down by 3mm uh, and what I intend to do is laser cut some round buttons that will drop in there uh, which I will then laser engrave with um, for instance TFC for traffic and then obviously we'll have the rod coming right through the back that will then go to the push button so I will be able to push the center of the button so that's my plan at this stage uh, like I said I'll go into more detail as I do each part um, I'm currently waiting for some extra rotary switches to turn up uh, before we start drilling out the centers not quite sure how that's going to go so I'll probably end up having to order more when I bugger the first ones up but that's part of experimenting I'm afraid you gotta make mistakes to get it right sometimes you never know it may all be easy peasy so as the ethos comes from uh, Sam at Cockpit Sim Parts um, he provides you with uh, a couple of extra button plates um, so the layout I've done here is what you'd find in a typical 737 layout um, but given the fact that this isn't a true scale EFIS, what he's allowed you to do is the two buttons that would normally be on the end here, uh, which is the CTR and the traffic, the TFC, he's allowed you to swap out one of these bottom ones so say if you didn't want to use um, I don't know data you could then fit the traffic button in the bottom there instead uh, and the top buttons can be used via this um, push button encoder that he supplies uh, if you use the top encoder, uh, the push button part of it, as the push button uh, that's on the real one, then there's no way to swap between radio and barrow. So you you, you kind of got to pick which way you want to go if you're sticking to building it as it's intended from cockpit sim parts. Uh, as it happens, I'm doing away with all of it. Uh, and doing all the push buttons as they should be it's gonna be a lot more work but it will be worth it in the end but I just thought I'd let you know that there is options if you don't want to start drilling the encoders out or the rotary switches out um, there is options for you to move the buttons around as you please to what setup you require it's just a little something for you uh, plastic porn lovers out there oh yeah okay so I just want to talk you through how I'm planning to uh, drill the shaft down the center of my rotary encoders uh, this is going to be for the uh, distance selector on the EFIS. Um, it's uh, just in case you're wondering, it's an alpha encoder. This is quite difficult to do because it's a D shaped uh, spline on it, um, so you've got a lot less to drill through than you have with the uh, the ones with the full splines on them. Um, what I've got set up here is 
just a drill vise uh, and what I've done is I've put a chuck in the vise uh, and then I've used the square to make sure it's straight uh, in both directions so both this way and this way uh, the next job is to center the chuck with the drill um, I'm just using a Dremel workstation pillar drill it's it's okay um, there's a little bit of movement I wish I'd never got rid of my big pillar drill but uh, I might have to buy another one because I do miss it now I've got rid of it anyway so what I'm gonna do is do the chuck up somewhat and then bring the drill down so that my drill bit goes right down the center of the chuck and um, what I'm going to do is close the chuck up to about the size of my drill bit so something like that now what I need to do is make sure I don't move this vise so I can now open the chuck up uh, on the first stage of the drilling all we're looking to do is to go through this white layer and slightly into the blue layer below we don't want to go any deeper than that because running side to side is a spring that goes right through the center so about here there's a spring that goes right the way through and we don't want to hit that so we just want to pierce the white layer and slightly into the blue also with these D-shaped uh, splines on this uh, there's three collets in the chuck and what you want to do is get the flat part so that it's not on one of the collets so the, the collets are only nipping on the round part because that will help keep it centered so we'll put it as deep as we can go so that any downward force we apply doesn't move it and you need to do it finger tight uh, that should now be drilling dead center and what I've done is kept the drill bit well up in the chuck so I keep the drill as short as possible so I apologize for the noise would help if I turned it on at the wall of course gonna drill nice and slow Okay, I think we're there. So again, I don't want to move the vise because we need to come back and do some more drilling in a little while. Right, so you can see that I've gone through the white layer and slightly into the blue. Just gonna swap cameras. Okay, the next part we need to do is now take the uh, rotary switch apart um, and but when we do this we need to make sure we keep hold of this shaft and keep it pulled that way otherwise you're gonna have springs and ball bearings flying everywhere the easiest way I found to do this is to get a small screwdriver and yes, you probably will end up stabbing your fingers as I have a million times. And just pry them clips out. 
There's another hole in my thumb. There we go. Uh, remember to keep hold of that shaft. We're just going to take the white part off. And you can see where we've started to drill into the blue part, which is exactly what we wanted. So the white part we don't need for the moment. Now, if you can see, uh, let me get a pointer. This cut out here and the one opposite is where the ball bearings are. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cup over the whole thing as I push this shaft through because the ball bearings are going to ping out and we don't want to lose them. So both ball bearings have just dropped onto my mat. So now we know that we can pull this apart. And there's the holes where the ball bearings went in and all the way through there is a spring which we need to remove. There we go. So there's the spring. Now we've got a clear run to continue our drilling uh, right from here up and out the end of the shaft and fingers crossed my Dremel drill stand is gonna keep it centered so we'll go back to the drill now Okay, so the vise is still exactly where I left it. So what we're going to do is put this back in the same way we had it. And hopefully, yeah, it still seems on course. Now what I'm going to do is drill down as far as I can with this short drill bit and then slowly start lengthening the drill bit until we pop through the bottom. Uh, also remembering that my shaft is hard on the bottom so we'll have to lift that up a little bit uh, so that we can pop out the bottom of the shaft. But we'll do that when we next extend the drill bit. Okay so I'm going to continue that hole. Okay, so trying to drill as slow as possible so that um, and, and keep lifting the drill bit out so that it releases all the plastic because the last thing you want is a, a load of molten plastic sticking to your drill bit. So now I'm just going to extend the length of the drill a little. There we go, and we'll drill a little bit further.
That's not what we wanted to happen. I think I've just about got away with that because I'd uh, just about reached the end of the hole anyway. Can extend the drill bit a bit more, and I'm gonna refix the shaft in the chuck. But this time, I'm gonna just lift it up a little bit so that we're clear to pop through the bottom when we need to. I'm gonna do it up a little bit tighter than my fingers this time. I don't have a lot of confidence in this Dremel thing, but we'll see how we go. a bit off center there Gonna extend the drill bit a bit more again. Okay, let's carry on. Okay, I think we're through the bottom. Let's move this now. Yeah, we have gone there. Uh, gone slightly off of center there. I think that is down to, uh, if I can just lift you up a little bit, if I show you this, there's an awful lot of play uh, and there is literally no way to tighten any of it up, uh, it's just due to the fact that it's plastic. You know, plastic bends and moves. Look at that. I can see it's probably about two millimeters off center. Uh, obviously, it's it's always going to be closer to this edge because of the D part of it, but uh, yeah, I think it's still going to be usable. Uh, I mean, for this, it's just purely used to have a rod through it as a push button. So I think it will be okay. So let's pretend that it's absolutely perfect and we'll go back and put it together. I think I may have to um, get myself a proper pillar drill for the uh, the top two of the EFIS that 
are going to work with a rotary encoder because that definitely needs to be centered. Okay, so putting it back together, we've got our spring and our two ball bearings and our two casings. So the first job is to put the centre shaft back in its casing and when I first did this um, what we've got to do is we've now got to cut this spring in two and remove the difference of our rod uh, so these are the rods I'm using uh, they're just brass solid rods and just grab my caliper uh, they're 2.95 so 3 mil so we've got to remove 3 mil of our spring <clears throat> because <clears throat> instead of our spring going all the way through we're going to have two halves that push up against this rod so we sh this rod should fit I think we've still got some rubbish we've got to remove let me just grab my drill bit in a normal hand drill what I'm going to do is run the drill bit down again because I think there's some molten plastic in there that's yep Okay, let's see how that feels. That's better. Still a little bit tight. Um, I think it might be an advantage to maybe jump up to three and a half mil drill bit. The only thing is, I think that's going to bust through. I'll try and clean it up a little bit more. nice and smooth for the first bit, it's just the end. Alright, we'll have to go 
for the good old file. It's the ones on camera that never work out right, isn't it? Obviously. If I can get this file going through smoothly, then um, the rod should be definitely all right. Because this file's a lot tighter than what the rod was. Obviously, I'm trying to file down away from the, the flat edge of the shaft. Oh yes, look at that. So that, that's what you're looking for. You want the rod, when you let go of it, to drop out on its own. And that's how smooth it needs to be because all we're relying on is the spring that's inside one of these push buttons to return that rod back to its original position and if there's any stiffness or stickiness between the rod and the shaft at all you're going to have problems so that is exactly what we're looking for and whatever you do do not drop one of these ball bearings or this spring believe me I've done it it's not pretty Okay, so uh, back to what I was talking about with this spring. Um, when it comes to putting the ball bearings in, when I first started doing it, I was, because you've got to get one ball bearing in this side and one in this side that are under spring tension. And you'll find you'll get one in and nip it down fine. But when it comes to get the other one in on this side, you've got to, to open it a bit to get this side in and you'll find that this ball bearing pings out. Uh, that's where I discovered this slot. And that is what it's for, it's for fitting the ball bearings. Um, so what you would do is, if you can see our hole in there, you would push that through enough to drop your ball bearing into here and then you ro rotate the shaft until you find the other hole which is there and um, when you push this shaft through enough to get this ball bearing in because of that cutout the ball bearing on the other side has not got the space to pop out so I wish I'd have known that the first couple of times I tried this So, first thing we have to do is cut the thickness of our rod off of the spring. So all I'm going to do is just put my rod there, get a rough sort of marker, it's about two coils on the spring. 
and just snip that off. So we've removed the difference. So now what we need to do is cut the spring in half. Which is not particularly easy to gauge. Normally try and count the coils. So one, two, three, four, five on that side. One, two, three, four, five, six on this side. So we need to go sort of half a coil. Something like that. Again, I'm going to cup it. thought I'd lost half then. There we go, we've got two even bits of spring. Camera's not gonna play ball. Come on camera. There we go. Okay, so we can put the shaft down the center. We're gonna load one half of the spring into that hole. And the spring in its resting position should sit about flush. Like that. Then we're going to find a ball bearing loading slot and we're going to pop the ball bearing into that slot like that and then we're going to push on the shaft until that ball bearing then locates in the middle of that spring next thing to do is to push the ball bearing as well as pushing the plate down so that ball bearing has now disappeared behind you can still just see it in there. So we've now got our clicks back. So now we're going to rotate all the way around until the other slot lines up. Uh, then we're going to just slightly push it through. We don't want to push it enough to let that other ball bearing out on this side. But this gives us enough room to load the spring. You could have put both springs in at the same time, but I forgot. So we're going to do it this way instead. A little bit more fiddly like this. You might, yeah. The ball bearings just popped out on the other side. So, load both springs in first. I'm not too good at these fiddly bits. Right, 
Right, okay. So both springs are in. I'm just going to push that one in a bit more. There we go. Okay, so back to the ball bearing loading part again. So just to recap, get both the springs in first. Drop the ball bearing into that slot and then slightly push on this shaft that way so it lifts <laughs> lifts that up and fires the ball bearing out there we go so we're going to push the ball bearing in as well as pushing down on that so now we can not move the shaft at all. What's going on here? Mm. Might just have to cut a tad more off that spring. Okay, so I've rotated it round to the other side. So we're going to lift it up a little bit. Drop the ball bearing in the slot. Get something to push on it and push down. So that's both ball bearings and both springs in. Yeah, it's just a little bit stiff. It does rotate with pliers. Um, so I think we need to just trim a little bit off of the first spring. That's just putting a little bit too much pressure on that ball bearing. And I've just done exactly what I said not to do and pushed on the shaft and fired my ball bearing across the room. Uh, bear with me, I'll be back. Well, I had uh, two chances of finding that ball bearing. Yeah. Fat chance and no chance. I got no idea where it went. I know it hit me in the head on the way past, but where it went after that, I've got no idea. I've searched the workshop, tables, floors, ah, there's just no sign of it, it's so small. But I've managed to uh, find a swear, uh, spare one, and I've, I've gone ahead and just popped that where we left off. Uh, so now we have a nice clicky switch back. Uh, so now it's just a case of popping on the bottom cover and on the bottom cover you've got uh, this little piece here which has got a line up uh, with our ball bearing slot. And it's just a case of flicking it all back in like that and there we go. We now have a rotary encoder or a rotary switch with a shaft through the middle that uh, can be used as a, a push button or if you were to fit a knob to the shaft can be used as a a rotary uh, and the other end you'd obviously uh, attach that to there uh, so that when you turn this it rotates the encoder uh, and this encoder also incorporates a push button uh, which we'll be using for these ones although I need to probably find a better way of drilling I'll have to um, get myself a pillar drill I think uh, the ones we've just done uh, are these ones here uh, they only need um, the outer shaft and a push button. 
So there's no rotary, encode, uh, rotary encoder involved in these ones. So my off-center drilling, I've got away with it on this one. Um, but like I said, I'll bite the bullet and get myself a, a more rigid pillar drill uh, when I come to drilling uh, the other encoders. Also not forgetting that these encoders are 30 degree encoders and the top two, I keep saying encoders, sorry, rotary switches. These two are 30 degree rotary switches and these top two are 45 degree. Uh, I haven't got any 45s at the minute but uh, I need to get some on order. Um, but when I do order them I'm gonna make sure that they're this type but with the full round part of the top so not the D-shaped ones. Um, the reason I like this type is the shaft is so much more rigid um, with these blue ones that may well have, have caused the offset drilling um, because the drills getting hot it may have caused some warp in this shaft because they're quite flexible um, I don't know but yeah so that that wraps up this little tutorial on how not to drill <laughs> Drill out the encoder. I mean, the, the concept is right, but unfortunately, the tools I think have let me down there. Uh, they, I know they always say a good workman never blames his tools, but a good workman never blames his metal tools. I and mean, when you've got to deal with plastic connections and and everything, I mean, this little Dremel is good for for drilling flat plates but to drill down a shaft like that I think it's a bit beyond what it's capable of but there we go that's that's that one out of the way uh, also remember that once you have this shaft in uh, you don't want to pull it out because the two springs that are in here will spring together and then you won't be able to get the shaft back in so once the shaft's in it's got to stay in otherwise you'll have to um, take the rotary switch apart again take the springs out push the shaft back in put the springs in put the ball bearings in put it all back together so i hope you found it useful it's uh, i wouldn't say it's a tutorial it's more of a guide on how you should do it uh, let me know if you've tried it and let me know how you got on just in case you're interested the ball bearings are three millimeters so before starting this if you want to get yourself a little supply of three mil ball bearings I would highly advise it because when they ping you've got very little chance of finding them <laughs> <laughs> 